بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Welcome my beautiful sisters I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى that you are all well and all the beloved people around you may Allah سبحانه وتعالى guide us all to the straight path the straight path is Quran and Sunnah, the source of our knowledge. The source of halal and haram is Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The authentic sayings of the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. Um, of course, our Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam mentioned to us from before that there will be a lot of difference from the time of Sahaba and then the generations coming. He told us that every generation will be worse than the generation before. So imagine now how many generations already passed after the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam passed after Sahaba. So generation after generation, it's becoming worse. But today it is not every generation now today subhanallah the trends are happening every few days haram is spreading in 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 subhanallah like in seconds with the technology with all these devices in the hands of the young ones with no guidance people are just using their devices they became slaves for their devices for social media and you can see the trends are spreading a lot faster than before. And all these trends are just useless. There's no benefit from them. Just someone does something silly and then everybody in the whole world starts imitating them. As Muslims, we have to be aware. We have to know that first, I am not going to follow these trends. Number two, I'm not gonna be even watching them because a lot of Muslims think that they are strong and I am just curious and I wanna see what people are doing. Let me just go and check the social media. Let me see what people are saying, what's the news, but unfortunately, we do not realize that we are following them slowly, slowly, without even realizing it. So what we have to do is, number one, we have to have the knowledge. Knowledge is very important right now. The time that we are living now, we have to learn Quran. We have to learn the authentic sayings of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam so that we can guide uh, it it can guide us uh, in the darkness that we are in uh, right now and also we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us when he set any uh, rules for us when we have to do something the obligatory ibadah then it, i know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that it is beneficial for me that i need it personally from inside and outside. Whenever Allah makes something haram, it is haram for a reason because Allah wants to protect me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. He wants to protect our emotional uh, and mental health. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to have peace inside your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be contented. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be free, free. You are not a slave for anything. You're not a slave for any device. You're not a slave for any human being. Human beings do not say to you what to do and what to, uh, where to go. We are free. We have a free will. I do not follow blindly anybody. I am not a slave for any device or even substance. I'm not a slave for sugar. Some people get addic addicted to sugar. Some people eat too much because of stress. Some people get 
addicted to some uh, things they take like uh, they say oh this is herbal and uh, this is okay they give themselves the okay that some things are halal and that is dangerous wallahi we are living in a very dangerous era where some muslims are making halal to become haram or haram to be halal like i'm gonna give you just some examples and then i'm going to give you a few ayat inshallah from quran to tell us if i am doing something haram i should admit at least admit that it is haram especially in front of my kids if my kids ask me about something haram i am doing i should not defend myself i shouldn't make it halal so that i uh, simply show people around me or show my kids that oh what i'm doing is right i should admit when i am doing something haram that yes it is haram and I should not be doing this or I shouldn't be saying this if it is a word. I shouldn't be acting like this or if it was um, maybe uh, a manners or an attitude or whatever. So let's have some insight from Quran to tell us about those who change the rules they say about something haram that it is halal, or they say about something haram that it is uh, halal, that it is haram, just following their own desires or following what exactly. That's what we're going to see here. Number one, the verses are from Surah Al-Baqarah. The first ayah is uh, number 168. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nasu, first, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Ya ayyuhan nasu, O mankind. So in here, it is for all human beings. Sometimes, some verses are, oh, you believe, who, who believe that, Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu. But in this ayah, Ya Ayyuhan Nas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to all human beings, Muslims or non-Muslims. And he is saying to them, Kulu, eat mimma fil ardi from what we granted you on earth, means whatever we have like herbs or uh, veggies or uh, water whatever we have like uh, uh, fruits whatever you have on the ground Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it to uh, we can plant it or it just grows on the ground eat what is two things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us now in this ayah to eat two things whatever is planted on the ground whatever grows on this ground on this land uh, vegetable or uh, herbs or plants or whatsoever number one halalan so you eat whatever is halal so whatever grows on the ground whatever grows from the plants from the vegetables from the fruits from whatever trees what is haram we are not allowed to eat it so we are allowed only to eat halalan, lawful, tayyiban. Tayyiban, the word tayyib is the opposite of bad. Tayyib is the opposite of wicked. Tayyib is the opposite of healthy. So whatever is not healthy, whatever is not good, whatever is not um suitable for me as a human being what is not good for me then we i do not eat it it is so simple it is so clear some people today in this time like why am i talking about this because now recently people are asking about substances that we didn't even hear about from before People are taking medications, people are taking some plants, people are drinking things 
without knowing, is this halal, is this haram? They say, oh, this is a plant. It's a herb. It's, um, I don't know. Can I take any herb? Can I take any plant? Is it all halal? This is the rule here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it clearly. Ya ayyuhan nas. So this is for all human beings. We can't say this is only for Muslims. Why I'm saying this? Because some Muslims say, um, I won a competition in my company and it was chocolate, but the chocolate was, or someone gave me a gift. The gift was chocolate and there is alcohol in this chocolate or there is pork, like uh, animal fat or whatever, or even like a bottle of wine. And um, can I give it to my neighbors? Because my neighbors are not Muslims. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, Ya ayyuhan nas, O human beings, this is for all mankind. All human beings on earth are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I can't eat, I can't give it to a non-Muslim because they also should not take it. It is not halal for them as well. If I give chocolate with alcohol or with animal fat to my non-Muslim uh, neighbor, then I am saying to them, this is prohibited for me, but it is lawful for you. As if I am making it easier for them, it's okay for you to eat it, but it is not okay for me to eat it. And this is wrong. We do not encourage them. We do not make it easy for them by saying it's okay for you to eat this but it's not okay for me so that's why we need to learn this first rule in this ayat whatever is haram for me i am not going to give it to a non-muslim because i do not want it to be a sin by encouraging them to eat the haram so that's number one you do not give your non-Muslim family or non-Muslim friends or non-Muslim um, neighbors or uh, work colleagues. You do not give them anything haram saying that it's halal for you, but haram for me. So always you want to give a gift. You want to give food to non-Muslims. Always choose halal. Because in this area, Allah says, oh, mankind. So no one has the right to give non-Muslims haram food and say to them, it's halal for you, haram for me. This is rule number one. Rule number two. In this ayah, Allah says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, eat from this, from the ground, whatever grows in this ground, any plants and veggies and trees and whatever comes from this ground, halal and tayyib. So it should be halal. Halal means it is not mentioned in Quran and Sunnah. There is no rule uh, for this uh, specific thing. So it is halal. Halal is clear. The Prophet والسلام, says in this authentic hadith, halal is clear, haram is clear. There are certain things. They are clear. Apples, apples are halal, definitely. Can I drink water? Water is 100% halal. So this is the things which I know that it is halal. Uh, cucumber, halal. This is the things that we know. Haram is also, some things are haram and it is clear that it is haram. Like the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran that wine, alcohol is haram. So I have to keep away from it. Uh, interest dealing in interest is haram we cannot deal in interest then it is absolutely haram but there is some people who come in the middle now there is few things that are mushtabahat وَبَيْنَهُمَا mushtabahat the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says some substances that we eat or we drink are not clear is this halal is this haram herbs or uh, some people now, like one of the uh, debates now, people are saying smoking, is smoking halal or haram? Argile, is argile halal or haram? 
some kinds of drugs because some people say you can take certain plants to heal your body and but they are not haram so how as a muslim how do i know what is halal and what is haram now the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in the authentic sayings and in quran here let's start with quran allah says kulu so I have to eat only halal and good, good herbs or good uh, uh, substances, anything that causes damage mentally, emotionally, or physically, then it is absolutely haram. The damage is not only a physical damage. Like, for example, we know that smoking is causing damage so that's why of course uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considers this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another uh, in another verse in the Quran Allah says Allah makes it halal for you to eat at-tayyibat now in this ayah at-tayyiba one and in another verse tayyibat like the plural any plant any substance you want to eat or drink, if it is tayyib, means it is good, it is not wicked, it is not bad, it doesn't cause any harm to you, then it is haram because he says, everything that causes any problem. Um, I don't know what happened here. There is something in my computer. I think I pressed on something. Okay. Mm, I am not sure whether I did view. No. What did I do? Can you all see me? And you can hear me? Because yes, we can. Yes, we can. Because it changed in front of me, the I don't know, maybe I pressed something, but if you can see me and hear me, then that's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We okay. can. So we continue. Okay. In these two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Khaba'if are every plant, every substance, or everything that causes harm to me emotionally or mentally, that it makes me feel dizzy. And what is the uh, proof for this? The Prophet والسلام, says, Kullu muskirin, every substance that causes drowsiness or causes me to feel um, high or it's not, doesn't make me stable, uh, is khamr. So khamr is not only alcohol. Yeah, this is for those who do not understand how do we make um uh, some substances haram like why do ulama say this herb is haram and this herb is halal even spices now some spices there is the uh, nutmeg nutmeg is a spice a lot of muslims put it in their food and they say it is just little bit now the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says kullu muskirin every substance that you know, it plays with my mind, makes me high or makes me drowsy, uh, is khamr. And khamr, alcohol, is haram. All right, this is number one. Rule number two, also the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says to us, because some Muslims say, but this is a little bit, like I'm not using it a lot. The same thing we say, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said also in another authentic hadith that Every little bit, like every substance that makes me high or uh, drowsy or plays with my mind or affects my body and uh, um, causes any damage to my body physically, if I take it in a big amount, then taking a little bit of amount is prohibited from it. Do you get the point? So whatever I take in big amount and causes drowsiness to me or causes any harm to me, then small amount of it is haram. So 
this subhanallah this hadith or these ahadith are i think like they are more than enough to show me that i am responsible for my physical uh, health i am responsible for my also mental health uh, some people say i smoke because i feel stressed it relieves my stress some people say I take argile because it relieves my stress. Some people uh, take spices or they take certain plants. Like there are in the in the Muslim countries, there are different types of plants that Muslims take it and they put it in their mouth and they simply chew it. They chew the plant so that it makes them feel dizzy or high or they feel like they say that it relieves my pain of course we all have emotional pain we all have mental issues or mental problem instead of distracting myself from the pain by taking something to forget why not sitting and healing it if i am stressed then i should learn how to get rid of stress i have to heal my trauma if i have trauma from childhood if i had a trauma from any bad experiences from losing a beloved person instead of chewing some substances to make me forget to make me drowsy to make me feel better why not healing it from the beginning? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us all the uh, tools that we need to heal. If I need medication, then I can take medication, but it should be halal. Taking substances to forget is not going to help me. I need to learn how to reprogram my brain, heal all the pain that I have inside me. If I am hurt, I should be doing tasbih. And I said this before many, many, many times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us how to heal our hearts. You have pain. You are hurt. You are sad. You are angry. You are mad. You feel like lots of stress. Sit down and do tasbih. How do I learn to be patient? I need to... I do not take anything, any substances which are haram to make me feel better. No, I sit down, I do tasbih, subhan rabbi al azim subhan rabbi al whatever you want to do, any kind of tasbih. But of course, the best of them is subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim These are two words the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said. Two words, very easy to be said. Allah loves them, and they are so heavy in the scale of hasanat. Why do I choose to put substance that is not even healthy for me, and I will have more and more pain inside me because it's not going to uh, cure the pain inside me. It will make it more. Why don't we choose the, uh, the natural healing that Allah gave us? Um, I know a lot of people are asking me about things like that. So always ask yourself, is this herb, is this spice, is this substance halal, 100%? Because it's a plant doesn't mean that it is halal. You need to know that. Ah, because it's a plant doesn't mean that it is halal. Number one, it should be halal. Number two, it should be tayyib. Tayyib means it is a good plant. It is good for my physical health. It doesn't cause any drowsiness. It's not going to make me feel like relieved because I can relieve the stress in another way. There are other ways by exercising, by training my mind, by reprogramming my brain. I can do tasbih and dua. There are many other ways than taking substances to forget. We do not want to forget the hurt and the pain and the anger. We want to heal it. Yes, don't take something just to distract you. Heal it. 
Don't sit down on your devices watching things day and night because you do not want to sit down and think or feel because you want to distract yourself from your feelings and from your emotions because it is very painful. No, heal the pain. Don't leave the pain and distract yourself. Heal the pain. How do you heal the pain? As I said, keep talking to yourself. I'm healing. I'm going to get better. What happened before taught me lessons. Now I know who are the good friends are. I can choose wisely now. I became wiser now. I know the people that I should surround myself. I have to become positive. I need to stop fighting with people. I'm going to stop arguing with people because that's where the pain, the emotional pain will come from. So I'm going to just relax and I'm going to only choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every time you feel weak, in front of substance, in front of a device, in front of someone, always speak to yourself and say, I choose to be positive. I choose to be strong. I choose Allah. I choose Allah over this device. I choose Allah over this place. If it is a place you wanna go, no, I choose Allah, not this place where there is haram. I choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over this food, over this herb, over this whatever thing, substance. I am a slave for Allah. I'm not a slave for this thing. I'm not a slave for human beings. If you feel weak in front of people, you say that I am strong. I have a will. I choose Allah over people. I am not here to please people. I will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but I'm not going to argue with people. I'm not going to fight with people. I'm going to be peaceful, but I'm going to say to them, I can't go to this wedding because I don't go to mixed weddings. I can't listen to this because I don't listen to music. Music, as some ulama said, and one of them is Ibn Qayyim al jawziyyah subhanallah. He said, music and songs are the alcohol to the brain as alcohol makes you physically forget and it makes you it distracts your you know uh, brain from thinking the music distracts you from reality we do not want to run away from reality yes i'm not going to run away from reality by listening to music and songs and start daydreaming I'm not a daydreamer. I am a realistic person. I'm not going to take any substance to make me forget. I'm not going to forget that I am here to please Allah. If I am not emotionally fine, I will find a way and I'm going to heal myself. If I am not mentally feeling good, I will find a way to heal my mental health. If I have to go to a psychologist, then go to a psychologist. And by the way, unfortunately, with my experience, not every psychologist is good in their job. Not every counselor is good in their job. If you go to them from day one, if you don't feel that you're benefiting, change them. Because some people keep going to counselors, they go to psychologists over and over and change from one to another, and they don't feel any change. Go to someone who teaches you how to change the pattern of your negative thinking. Go to someone who teaches you how to change your emotions because now even your brain maybe is addicted to thinking in a certain way so you want to distract yourself from that so you you say okay let me uh, go to social media or let me go and visit someone and then you know that by visiting people the more you see people the more you will be doing haram maybe backbiting lying showing off the more you see people, the more you will argue, the more differences you will see, or maybe some people wanna fit simply. They all wear different than me. They all speak different than me. Their lifestyle is different than me. I feel lonely. I feel like, I don't know, like I am a stranger. 
No, you don't feel like that. You are okay. It is your strength is deep inside you. So Allah orders me. I worship Allah alone. I choose, I'm not a, a slave for any substance. I take only halal substances. My lifestyle is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet I should be healthy mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I fill my heart with Iman. Yes, I, I, I don't feel lonely, lost. And uh, no, I, I find my way. Educate yourself and find your purpose. Yes, your purpose, you have to feel it. You feel wherever you go, you feel that I choose Allah. When I am with people, I choose Allah and I am contented. When I am alone, I am contented. I'm not attached to any human being. I'm not attached to certain places or certain times like, oh, the days when I was young or whatever. No, I am living today. And today I am alive. Whether I am alone, whether I am in my house or outside the house, if I am with someone or not, you should be knowing how to deal, inshallah, with all these circumstances. This is something you practice over and over. You speak to yourself and you learn, you grow, you improve, you change. You don't stay the same as you are thinking that, yeah, this is life. No, we keep changing. We keep learning. We keep improving day after day. You do something like achieve in this life pray, uh, help others, uh, do something, volunteer for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to feel that you're doing something beneficial. So when Allah mentioned all oh, mankind, now he's talking to all mankind that they have to eat what is halal and what is good for the body physically, for the mental. So I'm not gonna take anything to make me feel, forget. I'm not gonna take anything to make me feel better. I'm gonna heal. Unless it's a, a doctor prescribed for me medication or something that is halal, of course. And then you can take it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala shaytan. Do not follow the steps of shaitan. We spoke before about Iblis. Iblis is the head of shayateen. Shayateen are two types. One type, shayateen, like shayateen are made of fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them from fire. Those who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, followed Quran and Sunnah, we call them jinn. Those who do not believe in Allah, they follow Iblis, they are the ones we call shayateen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ Iblis is the head of shayateen who follow him. They, 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 wanna, they will go to hell, uh, of course, with him. And he gives them tasks, he gives them jobs to distract people and convince them and play with their emotions, play with their thoughts. This is what they do. Shayateen, they will come and they play with your mind. Yes, this is all they do. They whisper to you and they always say to you, take this substance and it will relieve your stress. That's what they do. I mentioned in, in earlier lessons that shaitan only promises. He promises you and he will give you, he will um, he will whisper to you with his army, of course, they will come to you saying, eat this, you will feel better. Eat lots of sugar, you will have energy. And this is how they convince us. They just come to your mind, they play with your mind, they convince you. But if you educate yourself, if you learn how to be healthy physically and mentally, how to fill your heart with Iman and knowledge spiritually, shaitan will go away from you. He knows who is weak. He knows your weakness. So he comes to you to play with your mind. So Allah says, He doesn't come suddenly and say to you, drink alcohol. 
he doesn't come and say, take interest. He will say to you, excuses, he will say to you, you're not feeling well, just take this substance so that you feel better. Because he is not telling you, take haram, make Allah angry. No, he will come to you saying to you, you're not feeling well, smoke so that you can feel better. Smoke argile and you will feel better. Listen to music, listen to some songs to forget the pain, the emotional pain, the mental pain. We don't do that. I, I do not distract myself. I don't want to forget. I want to heal. So you say to shaitan when he comes to you, yalla, go, let's go out with our friends to the beach and have fun because I'm bored. You are going to say to shaitan straight away, to the beach on weekend where all people are half naked, that is not my place. I go to the beach when it is empty. I go to the side where I don't see naked people in front of me. Especially if you want to go with your husband, you don't go with him to places like that. Even for me, as I am a woman, but I'm not allowed to look at women wearing underwear. That is haram. Yeah, some people now, they say, it's halal, it's okay. There is no harm in that. Yeah, they are in front of me and I'm not going to be affected by them. It is not about to be affected or not. I know myself. I know that I'm not going to look at women. Of course I'm not. But what is haram is haram. This is what shaitan comes to you step by step. The steps of shaitan, he will start playing with your emotions. When he see that you are responding, then he will come to you to another step, another step, another step. So he will go to you. He will say to you, you're lonely. You feel bored. Yalla, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the restaurants. You go there. You find people looking at you with a mean way. And then you feel shy. You start feeling like, oh, I am covered fully and people are embarrassing me and then he will say to you shaitan will come and say why are you fully covered look it is so embarrassing people are looking at you and then you start feeling really embarrassed and then you start slowly slowly changing your hijab you start slowly slowly putting some makeup and then you will start wearing some tight clothing this is how shaitan comes to us we're not going to listen to him because Allah says in the same ayah, Shaitan is your enemy, a clear enemy. Shaitan is your clear enemy. So always when you feel that, let me do this something and whatever this something is haram to make me feel better, say, I choose Allah. If you started feeling embarrassed from your hijab, say, I choose halal. I choose Jannah. I do not want hell. I choose Allah over Iblis. I choose halal, not haram. Speak to yourself. Remind yourself that you have choices. You have to make choices. This is ibadah. Ibadah is your choices. I'm going to eat something. I choose to drink in my right hand because this is the sunnah of my prophet I choose not to eat or drink in my left hand. I choose to listen to um, a speaker talking about mental health, how to be strong mentally instead of listening to music or songs to distract myself. No, I choose healing over distracting. I choose not to go to social media because I will start comparing myself with others. It will make me feel empty inside. I choose that I want to be contented. I choose I do not want to uh, compare myself to other people. Talk to yourself and choose. Wallahi, shaitan is sitting next to you, just distracting your brain. He just want to make you 
do the haram and say the haram and act in the haram way because he wants to take you to Jahannam and you should be always alert. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Iblis in this ayat, Innama ya'umurukum, he, shaitan, with his army, he ya'umurukum, he orders you bisu'i wal fahsha. Asu is every bad. Asu is every bad action to fight with people, to backbite people. To, uh, to say something bad, to swear. Shaitan wants you to be angry. And then you will start swearing. You will start backbiting. You will start becoming... Uh, Shaitan wants you to be... Um, uh, when he plays with your emotions, he wants you to be um, jealous. So when you are jealous, you start hating people. And then you focus on maybe holding grudges for them you that's when you start backbiting people putting them down and also maybe you will start making dua against them or you want to revenge simply from anybody um shaitan wants you to feel down he wants you to feel bored so that you go and listen to haram to look at haram to say haram uh, shaitan this is all the bad stuff this comes from shaitan. He makes you feel bad and then you will start listening to haram, looking at haram, speaking haram and acting haram. So that's what he is doing. Well, fahsha, al fahsha, everything that goes around um, adultery. Al fahsha and fuhsh is adultery and whatever happens between male and female. So he wants you to, he says to you, oh, your self-esteem is very low. He will say to you, do you want to feel better? Do you want to feel pretty? Yalla, let's go and put some makeup. Let's make these lips maybe um, uh, bigger. Let's put eyelashes so that we feel prettier. Yalla, color your hair and look prettier. Wear something tight. Soften your voice and start you know some some women like when they walk they walk and they just um uh they they move their bodies in a way that attracts the uh, the other gender like the the men especially if you walk in the streets in the shopping street in the shops and you, you are like walking uh straight like not really um firm you know some women like they they move their bodies or they laugh loudly they speak loudly this is all fahsha yes i have to be always wearing modest because allah created man different than women women are not attracted to men that's like uh, sexually, I'm going to say it clearly, because Allah did not recommend men to cover. Because Allah knows that we do not get attracted to men. But men do get attracted to women. Number one, they get attracted to the physical appearance. That's why I have to cover my whole body, not to show any uh, figures. I think I need to put the um, the charger. Just a minute, one minute, sisters. Charger is here. And here's the harder. Okay. Right. Okay. So Al Fahsha Shaitan wants you to feel um you don't have confidence, you don't have uh, self-esteem. So what does he want you to do? He wants you to show your skin, even in front of women. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I want to show how pretty I am. And then you wear uh, 
short dresses or you show the chest and the arms like why do women do that because shaitan comes to their minds and say to them do you want to feel pretty do you want to feel attractive do you want to feel special show your skin change your face change how you look this is how he comes that's the steps of shaitan because he wants to lead us to the so to the bad behavior to the bad words bad looking at bad listening to bad speaking bad thinking about bad and feeling bad al fahsha everything that spreads adultery around us in this society so he comes to women are you going to uh, smell sweaty oh that's not nice so why don't you just put some perfume so that people they do not smell your sweat he, he yeah he simply plays with our mind like that and the prophet ali his salatu wasalam said if a woman leaves her house with perfume wearing perfume and a man a stranger a man one man smells her with her perfume she should go back to her house and take ghusl a shower as if she had adultery yeah that's ghusl al janaba why because the perfume of women affects men it does not affect us women to smell the perfume of men so that it is halal for them haram for me as a uh, as a woman because allah knows how much it affects men yeah and i have to cover because the figure of women affects men allah knows he created us men are suffering because of what women are doing with their uh, bodies the way they speak even i'm not allowed to soften my wala yakhda'na bil qawl allah says in quran we're not allowed to soften our voices in front of men because it affects men and it attracts them so all these subhanallah shaitan has steps he plays with your emotions you're not feeling good you're not feeling you feel sad you feel angry you feel blah, blah 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 and then he convinces you if you do whatever he convinces you with haram you will feel good and then he will be ordering you step by step by step and then you will start doing a so speaking so which is bad and you will start saying haram things bad words swearing cursing backbiting gossiping and you will put people down and and you will be mean you're going to lie you're going to cheat you're going to do all these haram things well fahsha you will watch movies with bad scenes it, it will become normal to you it normalizes to you seeing women uh half naked it becomes normal everybody now all the series all the movies now with all the haram scene and people are just watching them and they think that it's okay no this is not okay because shaitan wants to spread al fahsha between muslims as a muslim i have to protect myself i speak with my family and i have to protect the whole community when i go out i cover my whole body i do not wear perfume i do not soften my voice i do not show my skin even the feet we have to cover it no makeup nothing that leads to al fahsha yeah this is each one of us women in islam we are responsible to keep the whole society away from al fahsha and what does he want now number 3 inna ma ya'murukum so shaitan he orders us with so bad haram al fahsha everything that leads to um, of course adultery wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun
and he wants to order us slowly, slowly with his steps to say things against Quran and Sunnah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that alcohol is haram, now some people will start saying, but little bit of it is halal. Allah says animal fat is haram, but now they come and say, but little bit of it is halal. Yes, I know that you might say, but the sheikh said it's halal. Because Allah says that uh, riba interest is haram. But some people say, but the sheikh said the first house is uh, halal or buying a mobile with, uh, you know, if you don't pay on time, then you have to pay a fine. They say fine, but it is not fine. The Prophet ﷺ said that people will change the names of things. So instead of saying interest, they say fine. It is not fine. Yeah, it is interest, but they just changed the word. I'm not gonna use interest. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy a mobile with interest. It is interest, it's not fine. Here it is clear. Be careful, my beautiful sisters. Shaitan plays with your emotions, promises you to feel better. If you listen to haram, you're going to feel better. He wants you to distract yourself from reality. Instead of healing your emotions, instead of changing the circumstances, change the situation, change your habits, change your life, improve. Not, okay, let me drown in misery more and more. Distract my, uh, my misery by listening to haram or watching haram or become uh, simply addicted to my device and social media and showing off. And, and you find yourself distracted and then you wake up suddenly and you say to yourself, where am I? And what led me to this stage? Some Muslim women changed the, the way they wear their hijab is absolutely not hijab. It's something else. And if, if she wakes up like, what happened with me? Like, I'm like in another world, like what, what happened? SubhanAllah, that's the little steps of shaitan that we do not uh, recognize. Yes, and one day you will wake up and find yourself I'm watching haram movies in series. Allahu Akbar. Now some Muslim women are sitting just watching series after series. And what are they talking about? Oh, this lady is pregnant from uh, this man. And this man loves this one. and But she loves his brother. And I, I don't know, like all these things. And, and it's all about love. And, uh, and, and then Muslim women will start making comparison between people they see on TV, on these movies and these series and between reality, their, uh, their real life. They're not even taking care of their houses properly. They, they don't have patience to sit down with their kids and uh, talk to them. The kids are in another world. You know, what is that? This is all because of the steps, little steps of shaitan. So you have to put this phone away. Don't say about something that it is halal just because you are doing it. Yes, if you are wearing a hijab, but not the proper hijab, say this is not the proper hijab I'm wearing. Yes, what I'm doing is haram. May Allah guide me. Never make something halal just to give an excuse to yourself. If you are dealing with riba, you buy a laptop or phone and you're paying every month. Don't say it's halal. Say this is interest, this is haram because I'm doing it doesn't make it halal. If you are taking any substances, please, please, please fix your emotions, be strong and heal, heal yourself. You're not a slave for a cigarette. You're not a slave for argile. You're not a slave for songs or music. You're not a slave for fashion and clothing. Ta'isa Abdul Khamila, Allah says, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, 
he or she is miserable in this life and in the hereafter, who worships fashion, clothing. You are not a slave for makeup. You are not a slave for money. You're not a slave for showing off in front of people. You always say to yourself, I choose Allah. I choose to pray wherever I go. I'm not going to put these nails that will stop me from praying. No, I'm not going to put the nails. I'm going to make the proper wudu. And I'm going to make, inshallah, the proper uh, salah. I'm not going to put the makeup if I can't go out and pray. Because you might go to work, you go to visit people, you go wherever you go, and then you say, I can't pray. Why? Because I have makeup. Choose to pray over makeup. Choose to make wudu over your nails. Choose hijab over fashion. Choose jannah over jahannam. Choose halal over haram. Choose to be strong. Say, I am a strong person. I am free. I'm not a slave for anything. I am a slave to Allah. I do whatever I want to do. Nothing makes me stuck. I'm not a stuck person. I'm not stuck anywhere. I will heal myself. I will heal my emotions. Nothing will make me feel better except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I pray, when I recite Quran, dua, 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 remembering Allah day and night. You are a Muslim, my beautiful sister. Choose yourself. I'm not going to be stuck because I want to fit. I don't need to fit. I fit wherever I go. I can speak with Muslims and I can speak with non-Muslims. I can speak with practicing Muslims and non-practicing Muslims simply because I have a good character, because I am honest, because you are a trustworthy person. You do not backbite. You do not lie. You do not show off. You are a simple person. You are a beautiful soul that everyone sees you will love you. They will not love you because what you're wearing. People will not love you because of what you own. People will not love you because of the, the, the things around you. People will love you for your character. When you are a beautiful person, smile to them. Be kind. Be nice. Be generous. But don't allow anyone to use you. You are generous when you want. But someone keeps asking you, you say, I'm so sorry, I can't. Yes, you do the goodness. No one tells you what to do. You know what to do, inshallah. No one will put you down and no one will use you. You're not a weak person. You know who needs you and you will, inshallah, do what uh, uh, needs you. Um, plant like the drug. Yeah, there are a lot of like oils or tea or substances or even tablets or powder, whatever people say to you, take this, whatever it is, and it will make you feel better. Then ask yourself a question, make me feel better? Where did I hear that? Uh, that's the trick of shaitan. It will make you feel better. This is the trick. It will make me feel better. Nothing will make me feel better except my strong will. I'm going to heal. I'm going to heal the pain. I'm going to heal my anger issues. I'm going to heal my sadness. If I want to take medicine, I will take the halal medicine. Okay, I'm going to drink chamomile or I will drink whatever. I'm not going to take a lot of um, caffeine. I'm going to stop taking the energy drinks that makes me hyper. I'm not going to take caffeine. Like one cup of coffee in the morning is enough. One cup of tea a day is more than enough. I'm not going to take lots of sugar. We take wrong things, we eat in the wrong way, and then we say, I need something to make me feel better. Nothing 
will feel will make you feel better accept planning what you're gonna eat what you're gonna drink even if it is halal if it is not healthy you're gonna keep away from it yes everything that is beneficial because not everything on the trees and in the plants is beneficial for me anything that makes me forget it makes me feel better that is every everything that makes plays with my mind makes me feel high makes me feel drowsy it is khamr. so you have to be careful khamr is not only wine khamr alcohol is not only the the alcohol they they sell in bottles no it could be herbs it could be spice it could be anything that plays with my mind so you're not going to put in your mouth anything except the tayyib because allah made a tayyib halal if everything that plays with my mind makes me addicted, makes me bad, I'm not going to go close to it. I'm going to use whatever is beneficial for me. If you need medication for the health uh, issues like depression or, uh, or uh, uh, anxiety or phobia or whatever, take it as long as it is halal and it is beneficial, but not substances from the shops and people give you whatever you just put in your mouth to feel better no you know what you're doing you have a plan you know what you're doing and inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you these ayat i wanted to uh, share with you from surah al-baqarah that all mankind are ordered by allah to eat halal and I'm not allowed to give to a non-Muslim uh, something which is not haram. I should only give them what is halal. And I'm not allowed to take anything except if it is halal and good and beneficial for me, for my mental health, emotionally and physically. And we are not allowed to, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us in this ayat not to follow the steps of shaitan because he is our uh, clear uh, enemy. He only wants to lead us and order us to reach haram and the all these al-fahsha, the things that I explained, and to turn haram into halal. And in some cases, turn halal uh, into haram. I will give more examples of that, inshallah, when I speak about the next ayah, which is going to be also beneficial for us because we are actually living these days. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all from haram. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the strength all the strength that we need to say no to haram, to focus and to plan and to heal and to be only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the strength, inshallah, to choose Allah over everything else, to choose Jannah over Jahannam, to choose goodness over bad things, to choose halal over haram. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to heal us from the inside and the outside. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take us all together, my beautiful sisters, to be on the stages made of light under the shadow, the, the, the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be happy, pleased, to stay only for a few minutes uh, and then to, inshallah, to run to Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, to the highest level of Jannah, inshallah. We need to focus, we need to plan, we need to have certain goals, inshallah. Our goal is to go together to the highest level of Jannah with prophets, with messengers, with martyrs, with truthful, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. 
نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته